I was asked to talk about uh, a renewable project, either at current or in the future. So I've picked the, uh, hydrogen. You know, hydrogen is certainly one, probably not now, but one in the next kind of five, ten years will be very significant. It's just one of the, the basket of energy transition technologies that we, we work on in Ramball. Um, and we talk about energy transition, I think what we really mean is energy integration. So it's, the future is about bringing energy together and coupling different vectors. You know, as, as we look at the energy kind of market now, everything's getting lumped together. Offshore wind, we're looking at how do we store that energy, how do we convert it, how do we use hydrogen, how do we use waste heat for um, heating. So it's all coming together. And what that means is there's a lot of local solutions. And it just means there's, there's more opportunities for local land use as well. So hopefully it's all very relevant to what we're talking about. Um, Ramble, for those who don't know who Ramble are, we're a global consultancy. There is 17,000 of us. Very strong North America, Europe, especially Northern Europe, um, although we're present in 35 countries. We are a Danish company, so we are headquartered in Copenhagen. Again, that's, that's very useful. We tend to find um, the kind of Danes and Danish government tends to be a, a few years ahead of the UK. So leveraging that experience and that knowledge is very, very useful. We're also owned by a, a foundation, which is a, a charitable foundation, which is nice. Um, we work in a number of different uh, sectors, um, building transport, water, environmental health and energy. And again, the interesting thing we're finding is more and more of these sectors are coming together, coupling. So more and more working with our transport uh, colleagues, looking at infrastructure for, for trains, for electrification, for um, complex fuels, for HGVs, etc. Um, water, we'll talk about in a minute, is very important when you look at um, hydrogen, for example, but a lot of energy projects need a lot of water. Even buildings now, we're working a lot with buildings colleagues, looking at how do, we, how do we heat our homes, how do we design social spaces for the future that incorporate the energy requirements that we need. And obviously, you know, the environmental health aspects have never been more prominent. That kind of need to kind of do good and that, that kind of biodiversity impact and, and improvements are, are kind of prevalent in all the projects that we do now. Okay, so before I jump into the case study, uh, just again a quick one about hydrogen. Obviously, I'm going to talk about green hydrogen. There's a whole spectrum of colours, but the green one's the one that everyone will want and it's the, it's the most important one to, kind of, to deal with just now. So taking renewable power and creating hydrogen by breaking down water, hence why you need a lot of water to make the hydrogen. We tend to talk about power to X rather than just hydrogen because hydrogen is just one product from the, um, the process and not always the most useful product. So we tend to use hydrogen as a, a product for other synth fuels that we can use in um, aviation and transport HGV. So the power to X just means the, the kind of taking electrical power which is renewable and converting it into a, a synth fuel which is, is useful. Okay, but what this means then is the process becomes much more complicated. So you've got your sources of power, you've got your conversions, and then you've got your end products. So it all becomes a very, very complex um, solution and, and problems to solve. And I think that's where Rambo like to kind of differentiate themselves in the market, dealing with that, that systems approach where you bring all these sectors together, but also dealing with the complexity of a very, very complex future system. Okay. Case study. So we work with Scottish Water. And we have worked with them for a long time on a number of different projects. They are um, a, a public body, but they're actually a very forward-thinking public body. They, they produce the, uh, so they, they manage the, the water and wastewater for Scotland. They've got you know 18,000 treatment plants. They have a very, very ambitious net zero um, target, but they're also very committed to it. They're really driven by the need to decarbonise their, their whole organisation by 2040. They have a large HGV fleet, which is used for transporting chemicals back and forth. And again, that was the focus for, for this, this case study. So the, the brief, when they came to us, was to say, look, they've got these two sites they wanted to look at. They wanted to understand what hydrogen can do for them. What, what part of the puzzle does it solve for them in their future kind of journey to net zero? So the two sites we looked at, one in Glasgow, one in Aberdeen, um, with a view of they had a kind of, a, I suppose, an idea that they could produce hydrogen, they could convert their, their fleet, and all of a sudden they would have a, a kind of decarbonised transport system. So once we started working with them, well, actually, it, it, it turned out to a really neat project because the system or the, the process of generating the, the hydrogen was actually a very circular one. So we would get renewable power, 
But then during the generation of the, the hydrogen, we actually created heat and we create oxygen when we break down the water. Both of those compounds, both the heat and the oxygen, can be fed into their process, their wastewater process, to help the efficiency and help improve the efficiency. And then rather than using kind of potable water or fresh water, we use wastewater. So again, not the same kind of environmental impact, not the same social impact of taking water um, from reservoirs. So a really nice circular process, which again, because of the efficiencies there, it helps the business case, which is really important. And we'll talk about that in a second, but the, these are not just technical projects. These, are, these have to be financially viable projects as well. So making sure we have a lot of different revenue streams in terms of, of heating, in terms of uh, oxygen, as well as the end product, which can be hydrogen or, or any other kind of power text product, is really important. So the efficiency there was, was really kind of in, our foremind, in the forefront of our mind to make sure we kept the, the revenues and the business case really sound. Some of the challenges we kind of faced on this project, so hydrogen generation, it, it is it's quite large and you need a lot of space and there was, there was kind of site constraints on that. So again, that's something that we did look at surrounding landowners to try and help see if they could you know, either le lend us or sorry, loan us or sort of kind of buy some land. There was no room for on-site renewables. We had a bit of token solar, but really we needed to look for other renewables. So again, that was when we started talking to um, local landowners to see if they would think about wind or solar. Uh, in that case, we were using, going to use a PPA initially until we could do that. Hydrogen storage, there's still a lot of concern around hydrogen storage. It is a very flammable, explosive gas. So again, it's about managing the stakeholders and making sure where you put the storage is in a safe place. You don't really want to put it in the centre of a, a city if you can avoid it. And obviously, the other big thing is they convert the fleet to hydrogen. They need a little bit of resilience in that supply chain. Where can they get the, the, the hydrogen if they stop making it? And conversely, if they, they do make excess, how can they then sell that on? So that whole supply chain piece was, was one that we kind of worked a lot on. Um, the, the big issue being that... In five, ten years, hydrogen will be a commodity and you'll have a standard price for it. But right now, we don't know what that price will be. Financial model, again, really, really keen that we press the financial aspects of it. These are not just proof of concepts. These have to be financially viable to the clients. So the revenue streams, I said, we made sure we kind of valued all the potential revenue streams. And that's the same for most transition, energy transition projects. There are multiple revenue streams you have to think about to make it work. Demand and supply, again, looking beyond the existing site into surrounding areas, where is that supply, where is that demand? And again, that market price, really key. You know, you need that, that baseline price to understand where really your, your project needs to hit before it can hit the, the hurdle rates. So what actually started as a very, very simple project became quite a complex one. So, you know, we started looking, um, if, we, if we actually extrapolate that project into other sites, we would have a lot, a lot of hydrogen. So, where were the potential users? Where were the big energy intensive industries in Scotland? How do we get them there? So transport hubs, roads, how do we ship uh, either on road or if we convert existing gas networks to hydrogen, how can we kind of pipe them there? And then finally, whereabouts um, from a, a renewable um, generation source, how can we get the power to the various sites, not only in Aberdeen and Glasgow, but other sites, how can we get that power there to make it proper green hydrogen rather than you know, a, a kind of a, a pale imitation of, of green. Touched on water as well. Water was a very, very interesting point. <coughs> you know, that client and other clients we've worked on have been very keen that we don't generate hydrogen to the detriment of society. And water will be a big defining factor. And where we place hydrogen generation will be very, very much depend, determined on the volume and the quality of water that you have. So we did do a search on, in, in Scotland, looked at all the kind of water streams, and luckily, we are blessed with a lot of rain, so water will not be a problem. We could easily meet Scotland's ambition for hydrogen and, and then some because of the, the water availability. So outcome, we, the project, if, if it went ahead, we could reduce the carbon footprint of the HUV fleet by over 80%. We could materially impact their net journey, net zero journey, sorry, by extrapolating that to other wastewater sites. Um, so it's a real potential. Obviously, there is some hurdles that they have to overcome before they can implement it. Generally, hydrogen projects, you know, Rambo have done hundreds, well, over 100 um, hydrogen projects in the last couple of years. And some of the kind of key things and the key lessons learned, you need the right strategy and the right policy in place. In the UK, the UK and Scotland have 
some really ambitious targets and they have some good um, foundations for the, the, the kind of policy, but that is still not quite there yet. So make sure you're comfortable with, with your local kind of planning consents as well. The technology is really important, um, more so because of supply chain. You know, you, you are, right now you're, you're kind of 12, 18 months to get an electrolyzer. So that will come, that will mature as the technology matures. The provenance of that supply chain as well is really important and that's something to look into and it's again for all energy transitions, make sure you understand where your materials come from. Technically, you know, they've got to, they've got to um, be profitable as well, you know, so understanding the business case, which is much more complex in traditional energy projects, is really important. Finance, you either self-finance it or there is um, funding available from government, but there are also third parties that are happy to finance these projects as well because of the, the expectation that it will become profitable. Stakeholder management, really important also, not just for your supply chain, for your offtake of power and for your, your supply of hydrogen, but also your neighbours as well. There's still some fear around hydrogen, so make sure that you talk to your neighbours. And then finally, that integration part, that implementation between you know, the different vectors of, of heating, of electricity, of the kind of generation, really, really important, and it's really important that you understand how that works. I think, oh yeah, so just, just really recapping, just to repeat what I was saying, I think there is a fantastic opportunity now, more so than ever before, to get revenue and to get value out of renewable projects. Social acceptance is there. On the whole, there is obviously some issues, but I think on the whole, more and more people are allowing that. Revenue generation is really, really, um, it's a great time to do it, but be very careful, be very aware of the, the different revenue sources that you have to have. Efficiency is always going to be very important and making sure you understand where you can gain value from. Um, I think, yeah, I'll, I'm repeating that, but interlinking with other technologies like such as battery technology, such as district heating, is going to be key to the success of these projects as well in the future. And that, I think, is me. Thank you.